Of all the infinite species I've created among the endless multiverse, humanity stands out. Each and every creation is unique and wondrous, none more so than humanity. Each has prospered, many have long since fallen, but not humanity. They were my first hyper-intelligent creation, a test to see what such a species would be capable of. The feats such a species could achieve were beyond my wildest of dreams. It took them only 300,000 years to conquer their planet, a thousand more to take over their star cluster, a thousand more to take their galaxy. Such feats were uncommon but not unheard of, nothing noteworthy in the infinite scheme of things. The way they did it, however, I've never seen it before or since. Big stick diplomacy is what they call it, endless hatred towards their enemy, boundless love for their allies. By forming pacts and agreements, they made half of the galaxy their protectorates. The other half received the big stick. In the human year 4249, the first galactic war began. Their weapons were beyond anything someone could see in their most terrible nightmares, yet they only ever hit what they were aimed at. Quasar guns that could eradicate entire solar clusters were made precise enough to swat a fly out of the air without harming anything else. Bombs made of strange matter capable of eliminating the entire universe were able to destroy only a single ship before self-annihilating and becoming as harmless as space dust. Case in point, they were an industriously brutal yet caring bunch. Empathy was always put above anything else. Laws of war and life were strictly enforced, yet they could snap in an instant and destroy entire species with the press of a button. I left them after this war. I decided that I wanted to be able to see how this species progressed through the ages with surprise and suspense. For a million years I have waited for this moment, the day I once again visit humanity. Tremendous force was being applied to the hull of the USS Sagittarius A. Each second, four million light railgun shells slammed into its shields. Projected reports indicated only two hours before the shields would collapse. Captain, why don't we link up with the rest of the fleet? We won't last forever like this. First Officer Tylus yelled, straining to make his voice heard over the groaning of the hull. Because this is more fun, prepare the boarding pods for launch. I want a squad of marines sent to each vessel assaulting us. The captain screamed back, his grey eyes filled with glee, arms darting around excitedly from monitor to monitor, firing random weapons into empty space. But we don't have enough boarding pods, Tylus protested with a whine. How? There have to be at least two million pods on the ship. Captain Bobby shot back. How could we not have enough? And there are well over 30 million light corvettes swarming us out there. More keep coming by the second. This is only wave one. We need to pull back to the rest of the fleet. No, we will board as many ships as we can. Bobby looked over the hologram of his ship, 1,000 miles long, 3,000 miles wide. It was the biggest ship available. It carried millions of weapons, billions of crew, and a whole lot of explosives. He scoured the hologram for useful information, anything that could help make the battle last longer before he noticed something. There are boarders on deck 250, in hangar 3201, put it out over the intercom. Okay, replied Tylus, clearing his throat and switching on the intercom. Intruders on deck 250, hangar 3201, deal with them swiftly. The cackle of the speakers died out, once again replaced by the drumbeat of gunfire rocking the ship. Bobby looked out the window of his bridge to see the battle unfold. Thousands of quasar guns streaked across the void, swatting away any ships foolish enough to fight the behemoth spacecraft. Each second, thousands of ships were destroyed, only for a thousand more to take their place and keep the cycle going. Only a light year away, an even bigger battle was raging. The forces of the Terran Krieg clan were sparring with the Sagittarius shields. Over a trillion ships were fighting in the void between Sol and Alpha Centauri. 
Just as Bobby began to yawn from exhaustion, the thud of the hull ceased. His eyes jolted open once more as he turned to look out of his viewport. Then, suddenly, the power went out completely before coming back on once more seconds later. Hey, Tylus, what was that? I have no idea, but everyone stopped shooting. What? Why? Something big is tearing into space-time right here. Sensors are picking up a major extra-dimensional anomaly. I think I can see it. Purple mist and exotic particles streamed into an uninhabited area of space-time near the Sagittarius. Gargantuan streaks of warp lightning filled the void as a great rip formed between the higher dimensions and the area around them. This thing is a Class Ten. Nothing entering our space has ever been above a Class Seven. What is that supposed to mean? This thing is from the highest existing dimension. It is, for all intents and purposes, all-powerful. Good God! God might not be far off. When I visited once again, I was shocked to see a human fleet awaiting me on the other side. They appeared to have been fighting a great battle right before I had arrived. By once again partially unleashing my omniscience, I deduced that I was right. Surprisingly, however, I was confused. They were not fighting over anything, nor were they fighting with any regard to their own survival. Even more shocking, a battle multitudes bigger in scope was raging on just a light year from me. Human ships were trading blows with human ships, but I detected no deaths. Every second billions of ships were annihilated. Trillions of humans should have been dying. Even when scouring the consciousness of this entire universe, I detected not a single human death. The ships around me seemed to come out of their trance. They quickly organized into a singular fleet around a truly magnificent ship. They began to move away from me while also training as many weapons as possible on me. Were this any other species, I wouldn't have even batted an eye towards these weapons. But something about these guns unsettled me. It soon dawned on me that these weapons were nine third-dimensional hyper-siphons. Channeling entire universes of energy from the infinite stores of nine the dimensional space, warping it around and through a black hole, and turning it into a beam that could rip through anything less than God. Luckily for me, that just so happens to be me. Then I decided to contact them everywhere, all their devices, connections, brains, consciousnesses. I said few words, but they didn't seem to get the message. Hello, my creation, it is me. I could sense that most of humanity thought of this as a mundane hack on communication servers. Before the video feeds of me floating in space reached them, needless to say, the image of a star-sized human figure floating in space, moving and glowing bright with raw energy, changed the minds of many a human. Mere seconds later, all the light in the universe was blotted out by ships jumping in to view me. I could sense, however, communications were being jammed. The great mass of ships began to part. In their place came a ship of truly gargantuan proportions. The ship they called the Seventh Seal began to bear down upon me. I was shocked to hear the communication in the tender dimensional space. Entity, state your intentions or be destroyed. I need not do as you say. Very well, but I warned you. A weapon I had not yet seen fired upon me. A great wave of pain washed over me, a sensation I have never felt in all my infinite years of existence. Luckily for me, being all-powerful and all, it didn't kill me, and I quickly disabled the weapon through my will. Do not try that again, or I will do more than shut down your weapons, human. State your intentions, then. To observe my greatest creation, as of now, I have observed nothing but hostility. Why should I believe you? Get the hell out of here. 
Then I felt a great force being applied to me, as if I was being dragged out of this universe forcefully by some power I couldn't overcome. I was sent back through my rift from where I came, and I was for the first time astonished. I was all-powerful, all-knowing, and yet they still managed to evict my first form from their space. They must not know I'm omnipresent because they didn't, couldn't truly evict me. I willed myself back into their universe. I warned you. I cast destruction incarnate towards their entire fleet. All their countless ships were destroyed in an instant. I then went directly to Earth. Once again I was astonished by the lack of any death. I opened up all barriers to my intellect I needed to know. That's when I realized humanity has reached its full stage, ten potential. Their consciousness exists alongside me in the tenth dimension. Like me, they cannot be killed, cannot be destroyed. This was not my doing, yet they had somehow made themselves able to uplift themselves to higher planes while still living in the third dimension. Bobby, what happened? asked Bobby's father. I think God just destroyed my ship, he responded. How did he do that? He just did. I swear, look at your neuro news. His father's face turned from humoured to stoic very swiftly. His mouth opened slightly as he muttered a single word. Huh. He collected his thoughts before saying, I'll join you in your next battle. I want to see this myself. Awesome, Bobby yelled as he stepped back into the Concho tube. His mind was transferred back into another ship. This one is slightly smaller, but in the same area. He looked up at the impressive figure. For all intents and purposes, it looked just like him, human in all ways, but power and size. Once again, the mass of ships returned around me, this time communicating with me freely. I answered quadrillions of questions, all from people who had nothing meaningful to ask. They kept on asking, Are you God? To which always replied, I am your creator, but you chose if I am your God. Not one person asked him where did they go after death. In fact, it seemed as if death was a concept that humanity knew nothing of. He wondered what they called this needless slaughter, if not death for sake of death. The answer he got surprised him once more. This war was a birthday party. Every child born on this day was offered a free day of battle. They were given ships to command, and all their friends could come along with them. This battle was simply a massive party. No one died, no one was injured. This entire battle of trillions upon trillions of ships was for children's amusement. Not just that, these were real ships, made of real matter. The humans, however, seemed to never run out. I once again opened myself up and found that they extracted matter from higher, infinite dimensions and the multiverse itself. They did all this for kids who were born on this specific day. They did it yesterday, and they would do it tomorrow. Humanity, my greatest achievement, is insane. Yet they are immortal and on par with me. They will be here forever, the same way that I will. They have become gods in their own right. Nothing can or ever will trouble them, for they are eternal. They have reached untold heights and untold lows. I am glad I came back to visit humanity, for now I know the true potential of all the life I create. Endless wars in outer space, all in the name of a good time.